it all yours or No, it's extensions for sure, yeah. Yeah. Sitting in the chair for nine hours getting down. Yeah. I cried like a girl too. <laughs> I don't know how you do that stuff. It's been really funny. And George has, George has had his first year of hair extensions as well. And he's gonna he's, he's a whole year behind us all. He's still doing all the complaining. I got a bed and I kind of put my head on my pillow and you can feel the beads. You know, we all got rid of that last year. It's a convincing thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we had you had a classic Rollo. Rollo? What do you want to know? Everything. <laughs> Rollo versus Ragnar. Um, like I said in there, it's um, the way. I, the only way I can describe it is that they're, they're both made from the same mold, but they are so different. And you know, it's kind of you can't live with them, you can't live without them. And, and the, the brothers have been struggling all through the first series, and their personalities are so different. You know, he's very mercurial, he's unpredictable. He's, but Rollo is very grounded, and he's sort of volcano. He's, he's ready to explode at any time. He's a hedonist, and I think these two need to work out their ways. On the only way that it's come to the point where they, they can only work them out on the battlefield. And what you're going to see in series two is going to be devastating for certain people, and some people might not come out alive because of the actions that Rollo takes. So you know, it's whether he chooses to redeem himself or whether he you know, makes his bed and sleeps. <laughs> It's a, it's a big thing in the Viking Age to, to feel like you know, you're living in someone's shadow and, and, and to, to feel like you're missing out on the fame. Fame and fortune and, 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 and your position in society is a big thing to Vikings. And because they set out to be equal, in Rollo's eyes anyway, it's not necessarily the way Ragnar sees it, but in Rollo's eyes he feels like he's been hard done by. But he's done everything with, with Ragnar and they should both reap the rewards. But when they get off the boat the first time and everyone's singing his brother's name and it's all Ragnar, Ragnar, it gets to him. And I think he's he stays strong, he does love his brother and he's, and he's been through so much and he's, he's had really everything offered to him by Earl Haraldson and, and Jarl Borg I think is a little bit clever and he's a different type of person than Rollo's not used to and he's manipulated him and he's exploited his weakness. Um, so you know, it feels like he can't live in his, 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 his shadow any longer. See there, poor is the question, which is the spoiler question, which you know, you're not going to get anything from me because you think you want to know, but I know you don't. And no one wants to know because they're going to watch it and they're going to be shocked. That's all I can say. So when you guys get the scripts, do you root for your character to get a one-up on the other one? Do you, do you, are you excited to like see if Rollo can take down Ragnar? No, I think well, I, I get really excited about our relationship. Because I think it's a really complex relationship. And what's nice about me and Travis is we both got brothers. So we both come from in different ways, and, and I, I really enjoy exploring that in the relationship as well. So it, it's, you know, it's just as painful as it's it's exciting. Um, you get those I don't want to fight. Ragnar doesn't want to fight him for many reasons, and he's scared he'll lose. And that's the thing is that Rollo may not be as uh, as clever and, uh, as a as a general, per se, as, as Ragnar, but he is a force of nature to be reckoned. You don't really want to fight against him. So it's, it's, a, it's a kind of battle of it's a battle of brawn and wits, and you know, one guy's got the upper hand on one side, and the other guy's got the upper hand on the other side. Um. Well, in season two, in, at the end, we lost a lot of young men with the plague and that. So it takes a bit of time to rebuild armies and that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, but his goal is still to go west, you know. He wants to provide for his for his society, you know. He wants a better life for everybody, you know, for his community. And he won't stop trying to um, improve their lifestyle. It's an interesting place we're at at the moment with the scripts because I'm starting to see parallels to because the Vikings aren't superheroes. They, when they go on the raids, every time they go on a raid, they bring less men home. You know, there's a generation of men, especially after the plague, that that is missing, and it reminds me of like after Vietnam, when there's a certain generation of men that were just lost, and, and you've got women and children and, and old men left. How you rebuild society and how you rebuild it to, to, to stay strong and to keep raiding and travelling west and exploring. It's, it's a really interesting place we're at, at the moment in the scripts we're reading. I think that's not really the <laughs> <laughs> You'll see plenty of raids this season. Next question. Yeah, we're the 
Conflict from the first scene in this next year, you know, the second year. The show is just full of conflict all the time. You know, and uh, I think later on my boy will understand that Ragnar really wants a legacy, a legacy, you know, and he couldn't have any more children with legacy. You know, they've been trying, and then he thought it was a sign from the gods that when she had the miscarriage, and um, yeah, he wants to have more children. Yeah. Can't hate him too much for that. And it's in the history book, so he's got to, you know what I mean? We've got to keep it true to history. He had a couple of wives and had lots of children. And went on and did even better things than he did. But yeah, the kid's great. That little kid, little Nathan, I tell you, he's great. He's so good to work with. Can you say how many episodes you've got? I've just finished two episodes. We're starting episode three when we get back. So, I I, to me, I'm not sure if marriage is true. This it seems like such a Christian thing. I'm not sure if they actually got married. I know it's in, I'm not exactly sure of the history. Of it. Are, are, are still Vikings get married? I think the Vikings invented the honeymoon. Did they? Yeah, the honeymoon. Of the, the, the honey from the moon. Well played, Vikings. <laughs> I was on my honeymoon honey with that chick. Yeah. <laughs> really? Ah, oh, nice and done. <laughs> honeymoon. The honey mead of the drink, and they drink over the moons, you know, the, the changing of the moons, so that they thought it would increase fertility. Oh, it's got nothing to do with the sex. Yeah, yeah increased the fertility, so they, oh, yeah, okay. so they're lots of babies. <laughs> No, that's exactly, that was my <laughs> inner work. <laughs> Honeymoon. Um, they're going to try to do everything they can to work it out. You know, um, but there's a lot of issues between them. And, uh... There's going to be a lot of conflict the whole season, you know. You'll know. we'll never know if we're together or not together, or you know, if she kills me, or... Yeah. Well, she doesn't have much of in every humor. scene. And for the last week, he has, he's been the first in, the last to leave. And he's gonna, when we get back tomorrow, he's the first in, the last to leave. So, we give him that and he's had a big day. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I think as an actor, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the way it should be. You should be kind of given the scripts as you go along. Your, your job is just to facilitate what the writer's writing. Otherwise, the you know, actors get too big for their boots and they start going, well, this is meant to happen. You know, it's, it's kind of nice not knowing. And it's kind of nice to be able to make those decisions as they come, just like life. You've got choices and they suddenly go, all right, I'm going in this direction now. And it's kind of quite exciting to get each script and put to the end and see the dead. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the teaser that just out there, that, that battle scene, we had like 60 stunt guys on each side in the day, and it was just, you know, days, the three days to shoot, and you know, they're out there all day. The stunt guys work so hard, and we're really lucky to have you know, like the best of the best that are flying from all over the place. And that's all down to um, Franklin Henson and Richard Ryan, our two stunt guys, um, because they've, they've worked on massive movies like Sherlock Holmes and Troy and things, and they're now bringing all of that kind of knowledge and, and skill into our show, so we're really lucky to have that. Because some shows you don't even really get, you know, you get given the, you get given the sword for two seconds before, and, and, and people don't know how to shoot the battle. And stuff, but they've got it down with Vikings. They know exactly where to put the camera. And, 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 Right. You get the camera behind the shield wall as well. It's not just about mindless violence. It's about seeing the whites of someone's eyes, the fear in their eyes, and kind of getting right down there and you know, just seeing that someone get the whole battle, get, you know, an arm get eviscerated right in front of you, rather than just being a shaky camera and, and, and just seeing body parts swinging across the lens.